Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of NFL Hot Takes. Um, in today's video we have another variety of topics to discuss. I'm here with the team Mothra and we're going to be discussing a lot of NFL topics. Um, most of them, you know, we have a few that talk about on things on the field and things like that. But the topics we're going to address today is the NFL decided that there will be no preseason. Um, fans being required to wear face coverings. Um, the Giants and Jets saying that they will not um, allow fans for their 2020 season. Um, the NFL saying that there will be day, daily COVID testing. And then we're going to look at who we think are our favorites for MVP as well as Rookie of the Year. Um, and then we look at two players who retired, um, Michael Bennett as well as Antonio Brown, um, which will be interesting um, to discuss. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with the NFL um, two announcements. Three announcements that they made yesterday. First is that they decided that there will be no preseason with the players wanted. At first they said one or two games. Yesterday they said that it's fine if they don't do preseason. So we're not, not going to have football um, in an actual game until at the earliest, uh, as of right now, September um, 10th, I believe, when the Chiefs and Texans play. So we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for football. Um, but as of right now, the season is still on. Um, and it looks like for sure we will be able to start the season on time as of right now, but things could change. Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts on the NFL saying that there will be no preseason? Oh, I think it's smart of them. They already dimmed out two, They already dimmed it down by two games at first. Now they're dimming it down to no games. And I think that's the smartest idea because it's the most safe idea or it's the safest idea possible. And I think that they're making the right decision here, although I would love to watch football. At the end of the day, it's just like rookies and backups playing. So it's really just like exhibition matches. And like the only real thing that could happen that's big is injuries, I feel like. So I think it's kind of pointless. And I think that the NFL is making the right decision here. Yeah, I think this gives the NFL a lot more time now to prepare for a season. Um, Preseason would have been a good way to test things out. Um for the um, season to see how things are going to work. But, you know, this is fine. This is what the players wanted. And the NFL is respecting the players, which is good. Um, and then they also accommodated the players for a few other things. They got them some answers because um, last week the players wanted answers and they barely had any answers. And we're actually very close to training camp. We are most likely, the NFL said, going to start on time. Training camp is scheduled to begin next Tuesday, July 28th. We'll probably do a special for that. But, um, yeah, I think this was a good decision. Um, this gives the NFL more time to prepare for the season opener, September 10th, um, to see how things are going to look um, without fans, um, with a minimum capacity, because the first NFL um, game between the Chiefs and Texans, we'll get to see what the NFL will look like with limited attendance, which is 25% at the Chiefs stadium. Um, so that'll be interesting. But this was the right decision, what the players wanted. And I'm all into respecting what the players want. And I think that the NFL has not done a great job of doing that um, the last couple of seasons. But I don't think that these two decisions really accommodated the players. They got them answered for how the season is going to look. I mean, a lot of teams, as we're about to discuss, are going without fans, which I think is a good decision um, because you got to keep the players safe as much as you can because we had over 70 NFL players test positive yesterday, which is crazy. I mean, more people in the NFL league, coaches and, th and equipment managers and things like that. But yeah, I think this is a good decision overall. Another decision that the NFL made is, I don't think, no, any none of the teams are going to be playing full capacity. Um, it's the safest thing to do. All of the teams will let out. There's actually a few teams, and I think a lot more teams are going to start. We have the Giants, the Jets, the Rams will play, and Chargers will play with limited capacity, um, potentially without any fans. Um, but for the games that do allow fans with minimum capacity, those fans will be required to wear face coverings to attend a game. What are your thoughts on that? I don't even think there should be fans. Um, I think it's smart for the places that are uh, playing with no fans. It's the most safe idea currently in what we're going through. And, I mean, I think that if you're going to have fans, you should allow, like, only maybe 25% of the stadium capacity at max. And that's even a stretch, I feel like. Um, and if you do, then yes, I feel like it would be 
a no doubter that you'd have to wear face masks. Maybe even gloves, but I'm not sure if that's the direction or not. Um, I'm not sure if there will be food there or not. And if there will be the food at game day, I'm not sure how many people would take it. But, yeah. We know for sure games are going to look a lot different. You're not, there's not going to be packed stadiums and things like that. Um, I thought when Philadelphia announced, they were the first team to announce that they were playing without fans. I expected that, and I was fine with that. Without, uh, I was fine with not going to a game as long as we had football at all. But, you know, this is good for us fans. But, you know, um, the reason why they're doing minimum capacity is so that they can social distance which is good. They're keeping the fans safe for sure, but are they keeping the players safe? Because you cannot social distance in almost every sport, but especially football. Um, you know, so that's going to, we'll say, you know, how that's going to look. Um, but, you know, I'm surprised that the NFL at all, so teams, teams and cities can decide whether they want to play without fans. So right now the teams, I believe, they have decided that they will not be playing with fans at all. Um, these are the Eagles, the Jets, and the Giants. I um, mean, the Rams and Chargers, potentially, they said um, they're going to play with very minimum. Um, and then the Falcons are going to play with 10,000, between 10,000 and 20,000 fans this season. Um, but masks are going to be required for every team. I ain't been surprised that they're allowing fans, as you said. I don't think that that's the safest thing. I think that they should just go without any fans. But yeah, face coverings definitely have to be required um, if they are going to allow fans at all. Um, I think it should be very minimum. Um, so, you know, like the NBA, they're not allowing fans at all. But for the NFL... Hey, it's it's more that the NFL is doing daily COVID testing. Um, I think that it makes sense as well because as the virus is happening, it's just... I mean, like, I guess the world is taking... There are certain places that are taking better care than others. And, like, I think that at the end of the day... You're going to have to do daily testing if you really want to play. And I think that they seem to, like, actually be getting into what they're trying to do more now. Because, like, at the start, they were just doing nothing for anything. Like, the Black Lives Matter stuff, they didn't seem to care about that at all. Um, They didn't seem to really talk about the coronavirus and how they keep that safety happening. But now they actually seem to start caring about their safety for the players as well. And... I think that the NFL is getting better as time goes by. Yeah, I think that the, the players, in order to play, um, they felt the safest if they were um, getting tested every day. And again, they respected the players, which that's great from the NFL, which I haven't always done in the past, but they are this season, um, which is good. Um, but yeah, this is a good job of respecting the players. But players can opt out too, just like in other leagues. They have until August 3rd to opt out, so they don't have to play. Um, and then the only other answer we didn't get was what happens if somebody tests positives, which is another question the players asked. That they didn't get an answer yet. I think that was like the only question they asked. But, you know, daily COVID testing, I think that they may even have to do two COVID tests. Um, then I think in order to appear in a game, you have to test positive for COVID. If you test positive for um, COVID in order to play, I think you have to have two negative COVID tests is what the NFL is saying. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, I'm very surprised that the NFL is going to be able to go without fans and things like that. I was, I was optimistic, but this was definitely not as much as optimistic I wanted to be. I didn't think we were going to be able to start in time. This is great. Um, you know, I think that the NFL would have had to come out and say that we're not going to start training camp on time because we are starting, today's July 22nd, so we're starting six days from now training camp. Um, so yeah, um, those are my thoughts on that. Um, some other topics that we have, uh, two players retired yesterday, um, Antonio Brown, who has not, who, um, was cut from the Patriots, um, says that he is um, retiring. What are your thoughts on that? Um, at this point, Antonio Brown, I don't even know what to think about this guy. Like, what is this, like, the second time, basically, he's retiring? Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't make sense at this point. He's never going to play football again, I guess, so who knows what he's going to do with his life. Um, I guess it makes sense, though, because, like, he's really not going to get signed by any teams. But... I don't know what he's going to do to make money and 
I mean, like, then again, I guess he's already made so much money in his career, but, like, if he somehow gets money problems, I'm not sure what he's gonna find that's, like, gonna get him a lot of money if he seriously needs that much. But I'm, I guess I'm just, like, scared about what he's gonna do with his future. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think that, you know, Antonio Brown, I don't know if this will be the last time that he plays. He's saying that, but I would not be surprised at all, you know. Um, this is one that, where they, you know, it's like saying, you know, he, I didn't think, I don't think he really needed to say that, but, you know, it's not something that's going to affect uh, anybody at all. It's not like a big decision. Um, you know, I'm not surprised by it. I don't think he'll ever play in the NFL again. Um, you know, he had so many chances. He was a great player that just ruined his career. Um, and it's unfortunate, but I don't think he'll play again. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he's going to play again. Um, and then the other player that retired yesterday was Michael Bennett, um, who he actually plays, um, and he did, um, which was um, his retirement that he announced yesterday. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, Michael Bennett was not a terrible player, actually. Um, I believe he got, like, three Pro Bowls or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think he ever did, like, anything terrible in his career, so that's good. Um, he seemed like a cool dude. Uh, I guess I'm sad to see him go, but, like, you don't want any football player to retire, but, like, at the end of the day, if it's for the better cause, then I guess it's good, and I guess that he made his money, he had a good career, and now he's retiring, so I guess I'm happy for him. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, he said that his decision was not impacted by the um, coronavirus, that he, his body has taken a brutal beating, which is a lot with football players, and he just felt like it was time, and he's already on to other things. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think this is a good retirement. He was a decent player. Um, it's a, you know, it's, yeah, as you said, it's tough to see any player retire. Um, but, you know, he was at his end of his career. He had a decent career. Um, I think he had a really good career, actually, and he called it a career, and there's nothing wrong with that. So... Yeah, I, don't, I think it was a good retirement and a good decision by him um, because I think he would have sacrificed a lot of injuries um, if he would have kept on playing, as he said. Um, and then the other two things that we're going to talk about are who we think will win Rookie of the Year, um, who our favorites are to win Rookie of the Year next season. Um, so who do you think are your fa- who do you think are the favorites to win Rookie of the Year next season? Um. Well, I think that Justin Herbert, Chase Young, and Joe Burrow are at the top because I'm I'm pretty sure that Joe Burrow is going to be the starter for the Bengals because, like, they already gave Andy Dalton away. So Joe Burrow is definitely going to be the starter for the Bengals, so he's going to get a bunch of playing time. So he probably has the hottest chance out of any of them. Same with Chase Young. He's going to be a starter, I'm assuming, and... Man, that guy is a beast, so same as Joe Burrow, so I do think that they have a very high chance. And then with Justin Herbert, um, my only problem with him is his accuracy. Like, in college, on um, in Oregon, um, he he is definitely he's definitely an athletic menace. He's like six six, very athletic. Um, but I think that he might be throwing a bit too many interceptions and that's what I'm scared for. And that's all, basically, because, like, Tyrod Taylor, I would love to see him start, but at the same time, I would love to see Justin Herbert start as well. So, those are my top three. I think that if I have to rank them in order, I'd maybe put Chase Young 1, Joe Burrow 2, and Justin Herbert 3. Yeah, for me, it's between Chase Young and Joe Burrow. As you said, um, but I think that a lot of people, this is like a unpopular opinion. I think that the Bengals will be decent next year. I think I don't think they're going to go 4-12 or 5-11 and 11, like a lot of people think. I think that they have the ability to potentially, potentially, because um, they have, you know, a decent team to with Joe Burrow. Because um, Joe Burrow, he said in his entire life he has never had a bad season. Um, 
and he's never had a losing season. So I think that, you know, I will, the Bengals really trust Joe Burrow, and I think that they are potentially playoff contenders. I think that they'll go 79. Um, but for me, you know, Chase Young is a really good player too, and he's really going to have to help out the Redskins because um, they're really going to struggle next season. Um, but for me, I think Joe Burrow will win if he has the kind of season that I think he is capable of having. I think that he can definitely um, win the rookie of the year. So that's my prediction. I think that um, Joe Burrow can take it, but Chase Young can also take it as well. Um, for MVP, um, who are your MVP favorites for who could um, possibly take MVP? Honestly, I think that he's gone. He got snubbed last year. Although, I strongly despise his team. I think that Russell Wilson has a very high chance. Um, it's going to be DK Metcalf's second season. Tyler Lockett just came off of his arguably best season ever with over a thousand receiving yards. Um, DK Metcalf got 900 receiving yards as a rookie, which was like, I think, second or third. Um, and I think that DK might be able to get a thousand... A, a season with a thousand yards. And I think that's scary for Russell Wilson though is his O line. Because Russell Wilson probably the best scrambler in the league. But like how much do you want the player to scramble? Like although I don't think that Russell Wilson's ever gonna get injured. Well maybe not ever, but like he has very high durability. Their O line is getting up there in age, and they need to work on their O line a lot. Um, but they might be able to pound the rock a lot as well. And I think that Russell Wilson has been hardcore carrying the Seahawks for a couple of years already. Like, if the Seahawks did not have Russell Wilson, oh man, that would be a nightmare. Well, a nightmare for them, not a nightmare for me. But like. Yeah, I think that Russell Wilson would have to be my favorite right now. And it's QB bias as well, so. Yeah, Russell Wilson is definitely a favorite for next season. You know, Michael Thomas as well. Um, players like that. Um, I think that a the two potential um, dark horse MVP candidates are Drew Locke and Kyler Murray because I think that they will have a breakout season. I don't think they'll win it. I think my favorite would be Russell Wilson. Um, but I think Patrick Mahomes will win it again in his career sometime. Um, but for me, Russell Wilson definitely the favorite. You know, he's a great passer. Um, the Seahawks are definitely Super Bowl contenders. Um, and they're my favorites, um, two in the NFC West right now. Um, but, yeah, you know, Russell Wilson's a great QB. And, you know, it was between him and Lamar Jackson last year. And Lamar Jackson fairly won it. Um, Lamar Jackson will win it again this season. So that's why I think Russell Wilson is definitely the favorite to win MVP. Um, he's capable of it, and I think he will definitely be able to do it. Um, so, yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. Um, thank you guys for watching. Next week for training camp, which begins on Tuesday, I think we're going to do, like, a um, breakdown of each division predictions and, like, team by team and things like that. So that's probably what we're going to do. We'll cover other topics, but if training camp does, and I think it will start next Tuesday, then we'll de we'll probably do that. So thank you guys for watching, um, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.